chapter, we did uh, our energy balances for closed systems. Now we're going to do it for open systems. So we'll start with the with the uh, well. If you remember what an open system is, that's any system into which mass can flow and out of which mass can flow, which means we have a whole bunch of ways, a whole bunch of things that could be going in, going on. Um, mass can be going in or out. If we're filling an open system, like uh, charging uh, some kind of uh, uh, a tank of helium or something, uh, we'd certainly have just mass going in, not necessarily mass going out. We might have any combination of those. We can also, of course, have the same heat transfer and work being done. Um, that's no different for the most part than it was for the, uh, the closed system. So that, that's no great big change there. Um, but then the work could be boundary work or it could be um, the other types of work. Here's the homework. Thanks, Paul. I'm going to stop and grade it now. Yeah, I might. Alright, so uh, we can start with, with some big rather contrived uh, object of some kind that will serve as our open system. Uh, <coughs> we can designate a system boundary we have called in the past a uh, open systems called them control volumes. And we might have some mass flowing in. We also might have mass flowing out. We could also have multiple mass inlets or outlets and for no uh, in, in no way need the number of inlets match the number of outlets. Um, doesn't even matter that the mass in matches the mass out for every type of uh, situation we could be working with. Just depends on, on what's going on. If we're filling or emptying the system, then the mass in is not going to match the mass out. We can, of course, have some heat transfer going on either direction. What we're most concerned with uh, in, in general studies is the, uh, the net heat transfer, and that could be a net in or out. There can also be shaft work of some kind, which is, is easy to symbolize with a little little propeller of some kind, some kind of mixer. We can also have work entering the system via a, uh, a resistor. We've looked at before why that's not heat crossing the boundary, that's work crossing the boundary. Oh, we can even add on here, of course, um, this type of shaft mm -hmm. piston, piston work being done if we need. All of those things are possible. Any of those things are possible. Uh, and we've got to put it all together into our energy balance. Okay, so we can set up kind of a crude energy balance first. Maybe we'll say uh, rate at which we'll start up sort of, sort of laborious with this and then we'll, we'll condense it of course. Rate at which mass K 
carries energy in. Uh, we're not just concerned with the fact that mass may or may not enter or leave the system, but we're concerned with the fact that that mass has energy of its own, either in terms of internal energy, which generally means it's temperature, hotter mass going in carries in more energy, more internal energy, but it can also have uh, uh, its, kinet its own kinetic energy, depending on how fast it's moving when it comes in. And we can certainly have uh, a difference in uh, elevation between inlets and outlets, and so there's a, a potential energy concern with the math as it comes in. Subtract from that, of course, the rate at which mass carries energy out. So, how are we? Let's see. Rate at which mass carries energy out. <laughs> what I'm preparing for is 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 delivery of this entire course on uh, on a smartphone. So we need to do all that kind of stuff. We just a little to bring it out. Yeah. We, I can't just say out. You can just put it out. No, I can't because that's just the, the this. I needed the rate at which this is happening. I needed which because that's proper grammar. Uh, it has to be the mass carrying energy in. It can't. I can't just say in because that's not the only stuff going in. We've got other things. that we need to look at. And uh, this section is no different than the uh, <coughs> no different than it was for the closed system. This is the, the rate at which heat transfer and work Cross the boundaries. Kind of a cumbersome way to do sentences, but we'll uh, we'll streamline things a little bit. And that's the though all the difference between all of those, and they could be. Uh, all equipment such that there is no difference and this all sums to zero. Um, the difference between those will be the rate at which energy uh, in the control volume changes. Because not only could we be accumulating mass in the system if we're filling it, we might not be, we might have as much mass going in as we have coming out, but the energy content might be changing. Total rate, <laughs> Total rate at rate. At <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that smartphone program is going to work out. <laughs> do you want to come do it? Sure. <laughs> you can. Next year, when you take this again, we'll have the whole set of videos. You could watch them and then say, oh, I can do that. I can screw up just as well as Manning can. No, you can't. I screw up at a professional level. <laughs> you guys are amateurs at screwing up. <laughs> All right, that's way too cumbersome. So we're going we're gonna to change it a little bit. We'll make this simply m dot in minus m dot out. Remember... The, uh, I'll put an E for exit. Uh, our dot notation is uh, designates uh, flow rates for us. And then we have Q net minus W net. And then that all equals the rate at which 
the control volume energy changes with time. keep working with that a little bit. We've got to keep developing it some. So m dot n minus m dot exiting plus uh, net heat transfer rate, net work rate equals d e c I'll just bring it up there and clean it up a little bit. See, now that will fit on a smartphone screen. As soon as MathType gets their smartphone app ready. It's, or that'll be an exciting day around here, won't it? We'll be, we'll, that'll be wonderful. Don't forget that this... Uh, Let's keep it in the rate form. Let's not forget that that, that has to do with the uh, net flow rate of the specific energy, where that specific energy is made up of the same three things it was before. The internal energy plus the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. So it's the rate at which those three things change uh, within the system. How can you use DE but put a dot over everything else? Let's just do e Good question. Good question. Who knows it? Why do I have? A uh, dot for those rate changes, uh, those the rate at which things are happening, and not here. Huh? Uh, yeah. Well, not necessarily, because I could have just made this e dot and made this m. Actually, this is a little uh, tricky with the notation there. Anyway, but. Uh, why not just e dot here? I mentioned that already today. Yeah, that's that's the rate at which a quantity is changing, whereas these are the rates at which uh, something, in this case mass, is flowing. These are flow rates. The dot, the top dot, is meant to indicate a flow rate, whereas that's just a time rate of change of a quantity. Okay, so so uh, we can put the whole thing together. Um,
Okay, so that's a little bit better. So uh, uh, maybe in a more standard form then, we can write it uh, such that the inlet and exit energy rates are distinct from each other then. the energy in the system is changing. With the addition, of course, that Ke is V squared over 2, Pe is GZ. And what we're most interested in, of course, is the change between those two. All right, a little bit about the work being done. That's actually two parts. Uh, maybe we'll call one of them control volume work for lack of any other way to put it and that's um, the shaft work being done, piston if there is one uh, electrical in case we have any of those kind of things crossing the boundary uh, by the shaft I mean fans, paddles, mixers those type of things And the flow work. And that we've seen before. We had, uh, we had exactly that piece before. Um, and that uh, looks like, uh, in, in terms of an inflow um, and outflow notation like we're using, Remember, that was just uh, P times the specific volume. The pressure times the specific volume is the work it takes to actually make the uh, mass flow in. And so it's the difference between the inflow and the outflow of those. And since that's a mass flow rate quantity, we can take it out of the work part and put it into the flow rate part, and then we can make this the net heat transfer in and the net work done coming out. plus m dot u plus pv plus v squared over 2 plus gz in and that same coming out. pv plus v squared over 2 plus g out. Remember, E stands for exit. But if you remember the combination U plus PV, look familiar? H, the enthalpy. So, we got one more little change to make. 
well, two more, I guess, because we can take out U plus PV and put in H. So we can make one more little change to that, and we'll get the full-blown form of the first law for open systems, and that change being that we might have multiple places things are being done, so we might have several places where heat transfer is being done. I guess QNet would cover that anyway. We might have several places where work is being done. We might have several inlets where mass is flowing in with its uh, energy. And we might have several places where mass is flowing out. H plus B squared plus GZ and all that will be the change in uh, the energy content of the system. Got all the pieces there, I think. Man. So that is our full-blown form of the first law of energy conservation. No. Well, that makes it imply that there's a second law of energy conservation. There isn't. This is the first law of thermodynamics, comma, conservation of energy. They're the same thing. So you'll you'll hear at times we'll say something like that. We're going to do a, a first law balance. Okay, but that's the full-blown form. We need to simplify it for other things before we get to use it. But that, that would do everything for us that we need. Simplifications that we can make. We'll make one simplification of the assumption of steady flow. This is the idea that most systems, if we look at them over some great period of time, and if by systems, the most thermodynamic systems, we're talking about anything from car engines to power plants, if we look at the capacity of the system with time, it usually does something like there's a rather short startup period for your automobile engine. That's just the, the couple seconds it takes to turn the key and get it started and a little bit of time for it to warm up. But then for the most part, it operates at a steady flow situation or a uh, probably a steady state situation might be a better term. And then there's some shutdown period. So we have this startup and this shutdown, but most of the time is spent at some steady, uh, st some steady state situation. Um, where things aren't really changing much. For power plants, the startup might be on the matter of hours, 
and then the steady state could be on the on the, in the uh, it could be months, even years, possibly. So, uh, an awful lot of the time we can look at that steady state assumption there, and that will serve for us just fine. What that does is allow us then to make the first assumption that the system itself is not going to be changing uh, significantly. Whatever flows in, in terms of energy, in whatever form is going to flow back out. Also to go with that though, is that the mass in equals the mass out. The mass flow rate in equals the mass flow rate out. And this is uh, simply, it simply comes from conservation of mass. We have conservation of mass anyway because mass isn't created or destroyed by our systems but in this case it goes one step farther to say whatever mass comes in comes right back out. We're not accumulating mass in the system nor are we depleting mass from the system. Okay, so that will reduce things maybe to a, a little bit simpler. We could say whatever heat transfer is coming in plus whatever energy is being convected in. must equal whatever energy is going out in the form of work with whatever energy is being convected out with the mass itself. Oh, I guess to make it simple, we'll put uh, parentheses around that. I guess. Just in case we have multiple inlets and or outlets. Most of our systems will have single inlets and outlets. So we don't need the summation signs and we get down to our most usual form that the difference between the work, sorry, the, the heat transfer and the work will determine the energy change of the system. And so that's probably our easiest, well I guess we could uh, we could even go simpler and go up to it on a specific basis. <laughs> Which is even a little bit simpler if we needed it. Uh, units on that typically kilowatts. Units on this one typically kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, so those are our two major forms of the first law that we'll look at.
give them a little paint there to emphasize that. All right. Bit of a development, but easy enough for us to put together. So we'll look at a sample problem. Imagine we have some pipe flow. Where the inlet conditions are it's uh, air flowing T1 is 25 degrees Celsius 400 kilopascals and that area is 20 centimeters the area, the cross-sectional area of the pipe through which the air is flowing. And about 10 kilograms per second. And uh, altitude difference here. Twenty-five meters. And so we'll use G of nine seventy. We'll need that for the potential energy term. And here at the outlet. T2 is 50 degrees centigrade. P2 is 200 kilopascals. And A2 rotate. And that'd be good off. 10 centimeters squared. Okay, find a couple things to start with. Let's see. I guess we have more than we need, so. Find the change in the uh, specific energies of that flow. And again, this is air. Who wants to do the easy one? No one wants to do the You all want to do the hard one. You want me to do the easy one, so you can do the hard one. This one is pretty easy. What could we do? What? Uh, almost. CP. Delta T. Um, we have fairly low temperatures, not a very big delta T, so it's, uh, we can just use a constant specific heat, that one's pretty easy. That one should also be pretty easy, because that's just G delta Z. So all you have to do with that, well C sub P, you got to come up with that, and then the other part, you just have to make sure your units work okay. KE, a little bit more difficult, be 
because we don't know the flow velocities. That's the kinetic energy of the fluid itself. So we're going to have to come up with those. So take a second, do those first two real quick, and then we'll work together on the third one, which is a little bit more involved. A little practice at just looking up C sub P. Why'd you change gravity? <laughs> what do you mean, why did I change it? Because I have the power to do so. <laughs> this is what can. this is what it happens to be on the uh, tropical island where I summer. It reminds me of the thing that dogs do because they can't. Oh, what would that be? Never Make mind. video, bark at cats. Never heard of that joke, I've never heard of any of your jokes, Alan. It's not my joke. It's ancient. Delta T we have. What are you coming up with C sub P? 1.05. Is that what you've decided? Use that table? 25 degrees. That the, the, the table Paul's looking at is table A2. That's the uh, room temperature C sub P, which is at about the uh, at about the 25 degrees. This is about room temperature here. But what about the fact that it changes? Yeah, that you can double check with the next table, A2. Uh, it's actually labeled B. You look at air and you notice C sub P. Yeah, fairly changes. It changes to what? Three parts in a thousand. So that's a 0.3% difference. You can just eyeball those and average them if you want. So something like maybe 1007. Is that about where we were? Yeah, that's close enough. Kilojoules per kilogram degree K. And then delta T. Remember, this is in kelvins, degrees kelvins, so you have to convert those. Yeah, the deltas are the same. Delta T for kelvin equals delta T for, for uh, degrees centigrade. In fact, we don't even really need a K there since we most often are looking at C sub P delta T. Okay, so that was an easy one. That the potential energy is very, very difficult because nobody knows where that G came from. It's very confusing. 
unless you're familiar with tropical islands. Island my own, in the South Pacific. There we go, the Caribbean. Who goes there? Yeah, they do? Oh, because all the Russian princes who go there. And the, 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 they have a good boxing lake for amateurs. And the rain, rainforest. They don't have that in the South Pacific. I think they So units will be kilojoules per kilogram. What about this one? Oh, um, okay, 9.7, then go ahead with that one. I suppose. Yeah, okay, thank you. I appreciate your, you know, I appreciate your flexibility Top of that. Or something. And then the, uh, <laughs> the 25 meter height change. So remember, we've got to get the direction on that. Right, that's an increase in the potential energy. And then you got to get the units right. Trevor's looking over. Why does he get to leave and I don't? <laughs> well, if I want to get up and leave. What? <laughs> <laughs> so does the G delta Z work? Don't forget to get the units to work right.
code of conduct. See what it says about that. <laughs> It was, if, if I understand, actually being rewritten for you, yeah. for the most part. Yeah. Try to rein you in. We'll see how it goes. I'm standing over here, though. <laughs> Keep you between me and her. <laughs> she was boxing. And I don't <laughs> so the units work out. Um, what are some of the numbers on these then? This one is about, is about uh, yeah, a little over 25. And this one, how big? Point. You have one one hundred of the other one. So uh, it's very often uh, that uh, the potential energy changes are neglected because that's a, a 25 foot uh, elevation change. All right, so what about the other one? The, the delta K, we don't have these flow, the speed at which the flow is going through the pipes in those two different sections. It's not just a matter of the change in area. Because of the change in temperature and pressure, we're also going to have property changes that will also change the speed at which the flow is entering. So how do we find oh. these two velocities? Oh, this the density is going to change. Yeah. Well, we've got the mass flow rate, and if you remember, m dot equals rho a v at any place, and v is the inverse of the specific volume. And so uh, if we can come up with the specific volume, We've already got the area, we've got the mass flow rate, we can figure out the flow velocity at, at each point. So if anybody has any idea how we could come up with V at the two spots, then we'd be able to just chunk out those numbers.
because everything will be given. So how can we find those? Well, one, yeah, assume it's water and keep going. Yeah. Works great. Plug it into ease. We could plug it into ease. You don't have it running. Tables. 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 Or? Yes. <laughs> you already did that. You can put it on board. It's air at room temperature that works pretty well as an ideal gas. So you can just use the ideal gas law. So for either one of them, you can find that. So do the first one. Find V1, I'll give you V2. Just so we're not here all weekend. All you have to do is make sure the units work, get the right number. units, get R for air. <clears throat> oh, now can we put the tables in the front? Good thinking. You can't do that. You put zip strips to them. They're fast and too good. Is it there? This. Will that do? Uh, I think so. It's air. See, we okay. keep air at the top of the page and water down at the bottom so you don't confuse them. Yeah. 0 0.287. Uh, what are the units? Uh, Kilojoules. <coughs> kilogram times K. Kilogram degree K. See where he's looking? Yeah. Yeah, the number right there. Temperature was what? 25? It's being Kelvin. Does need to be on this one because this is not a delta T. So that's 25 plus 273. Okay. And then the pressure is 400 kilopascals. So some of you were done long before that because you ignored the units anyway. The rest of us. Units work out? Sure. What units are we looking for? Cubic meters per kilogram. Meters cubed per kilogram. Pascal is one one newton meter squared. K is already canceled. Right? And kilojoules is newton meter. 
force meters cubed per kilogram or okay. That gives you V1, then you can find, that gives you the specific volume at 1, you can find the speed at 1. Again, watch the units. So do that. units every time, right Chris? Yeah, you're watching the units are right there. I just can't get up and leave. Should the units be? Should be meters per second. We're going to square those meters per second squared. We've seen that before. That, that works out as units of energy, uh, specific energy in this case.
Yeah, that sounds like what I got. What? Well, but I'm not probably not. No, same thing. Okay. No. And then don't forget to change centimeters to meters, but it's centimeters squared. So you have to square the conversion factor as well. And that leaves us with meters per second. 17.8. And the uh, same business done at 2. You should get uh, 77 meters per second. That's a combination not just of the restricted flow area, but the uh, warmer temperature, lower pressure. It's going to give it a lot, much bigger specific volume. And so uh, uh, it's going to be pushing through there a lot faster. Faster than air. Because the, the mass that goes in comes out, but that's not true with the volume, not with the compressible substance like air. So you can check uh, V2.464, so it almost doubled, uh, actually more than doubled. The specific volume more than doubled between the inlet and the outlet. That's 277,000 kilometers per hour. Fast air. <laughs> you're not at all bothered by the fact. Well, you know, I test all these. My, you're not at all bothered by the fact that my house is 75 meters high, at least. This is more worried about the speed of the air. I do that because then I can aim this at blimps flying overhead. Get them off your, get them out of your zone. <laughs> Try to shoot. Blocking your Shoot them room. down, that's right. They're dangerous. Has it worked yet? <laughs> <laughs> All right, finish up the last little bit. We're still looking for this. We have the two velocities now. And that way we can compare the three changes in energy for this very simple flow system. The potential energy is essentially negligible, as it quite often is, especially for something like air. Not so much true for water, because uh, water is just an awful lot heavier, and so it takes a lot more to lift it. more than writing it in the book.
that's worth writing on your little conversion the table in your book. You have to go from jewels to kilojoules to divide by a thousand. No, to go from kilojoule to kilogram to meter squared per oh, second squared or vice versa. That's that whole thing is nothing more than this. Right there. Delta KE now? Uh, 2.827. Yeah, two, something like that. Mm -hmm. Something like that. So, um, it's one, but it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Get the basic idea. All right, let's see. Oh, I guess we need to get out of class question. So, we're just. <laughs> yes, you can, right down in the sheriff's office. <laughs> if he has something for you. Um, redo this part only for water instead of air. Going through those, but all the same other. Everything else the same. In fact, delta PE wouldn't change. Once you put the mass flow rate right in, it changes. Uh, the total change of potential energy. This one, delta H, just the same. You just have to come up with a different C sub P, and it's just in the table, so that's no big deal. Damn, look at that. We've been busy today. Oh, no. Messy board. It's not a messy board. It's just crowded. Messy. I've never had a messy board. I said before coming up all of you. Get out of this class alive. All right, redo it for water. So, what do you need to do? You need uh, uh, a different R for the ideal gas law. Would that work? The bars in the table. How do you know? What do you know? How do you know what water is like at room temperature? Do you have experience with water at room temperature? Yeah, what's the higher pressure going to do? Is the higher pressure going to turn it into steam? Yeah, of course. No, it's going to compress it right It's going to make it even waterier. Have you ever seen water out of a rock before? <laughs> Trying to no sweep blood out of us. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're looking for the same thing, only for water. The so delta PE doesn't change. Delta C, uh, delta H changes a, a bit, but it's just a matter of looking up C to P. So. That's not going to be a get out of qu class question for the day. There. You happy with that board, Chris?
looking in. Come on, 
something. Somebody can get out of here in two minutes. Come on, Alan, we're counting on you. You can free the whole glass. Velocity? Yeah, that'll do. Because then the rest is just 90 centimeters a second. Just shout it out if you feel like it. 90? No, it's 9. No, it's 9 centimeters a second. Everybody know where these numbers are coming from? Is that, is that minutes? Yeah. That's why they're not working. Or at least that's part of it. And then you have centimeters there and meters elsewhere. We, got that. We, we did have that, but you're the one who made fun of how crowded the board was, so I erased it.